Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tribune Unlocker, and today I'm breaking down some of the PS4 details that were released at the 2013 Sony conference last night. And I figured I'd hop into this straight away with the PS4 specs. I think that's what's mostly wanted out of everyone here today, including myself, because Xbox is going to have a lot to deal with. Now, the confirmed specs as of right now are the AMD x86-based 8-core CPU, and has a specifically made enhanced GPU with that that's all like the graphics and everything except for the CPU that's the processor it's the main processor actually and with that AMD I my computer runs with an AMD and I actually I AMD is really good and so is uh Intel but personally I prefer AMD I think it's better for gaming and everything it's been way better for gaming but for like I mean if you're an editor or something like that Intel Core i7, like you're streaming, it's great. You can stream in 1080p. Like if you're if you live streams and everything, if you have an Intel Core i7, you can your computer can totally stand it without like going crazy and going slow and making everything bad. So that is what's actually making me feel really good about the PS4 right now is the AMD uh, processor, and it can also handle Blu-ray discs, DVD discs, which you know. I think everything should be able to handle DVD discs now at this point, and things are, should definitely be able to handle Blu-ray coming out soon. Whatever, like the next electronics are coming out, should be able to handle Blu-ray, and it's gonna have HDMI output. So all of you that have the Game Capture HD Elgato like me, no worries. In fact, we shouldn't even be worried because you know they always improve with what's next. So it's gonna be HDMI, and then they're gonna find some better source for better graphics and everything. So it's gonna go from HDMI to like. HDMI 2.0 or something like that, you know, and then all that stuff, and it's going to be crazy. And then it has 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is what my computer has right now. And going up with the RAM, that is going to be crazy. It's amazing. I'm, ugh. It used to, be, it had like, I think 1 gigabyte of RAM or 1 and a quarter gigabyte of RAM previously the PS4. But 8 gigabytes of RAM, and I think 8 gigabytes of RAM is also confirmed on the Xbox 720. If if that's what they're gonna call it, which they probably will, but eight gigabytes of RAM is a huge step up, and that's probably gonna last us um, eight years. I think is what it was came out in two thousand six, so about seven eight years, yeah, for for the Xbox. So about seven to eight years, we should be looking for this eight gigabyte RAM to last us and this processor, and the PS four won't be backwards compatible with old games. So if you have a PS3 and you're going to keep it, keep the games. But if you're going to sell it, sell the games now while they're... Well, don't sell them now, but sell the games that you don't really play anymore now. Get some extra money in. And if you have games that you're going to, you know, keep, they won't be compatible with the PS4. So keep your PS3. And PS4 users will be able to stream on PS3 and older generation games online. And what that pretty much means is there's going to be this, like, cloud app thingy for the PS4. And that you will be able to play games on, like, PS3 games on it. I'm not sure how that's actually going to work. I think you're going to have to pay a subscription for that. Because it doesn't... You can't put your games into the PS4 and load them and play on the cloud, is what I'm thinking. Because I don't think there's going to be games anymore, if you know what I mean, there's not going to be discs, there's going to be all internet, and you're just going to have to download games, play them, like that, and I don't think you can sell them back, and if you do, they might give you a store credit, if, if it's possible to sell them back, but I don't know, it's, gaming is becoming its own thing, it's becoming really popular, and I'm excited for it, but I'm also, come on, who doesn't like opening a disc, I mean, you know what I mean, like, who doesn't like grabbing their case and like, ooh, looking inside at the manual, seeing the disc? I mean, plus we don't have to worry about breaking our discs now, but it's still good. And there's going to be a PlayStation app, which will enable, if you have an iPhone or an iPad or an Android-based smartphone or a tablet, so like iPad again and then like a, a Kindle Fire might work, I'm not sure, but... If that runs on Android, someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it does. And you will be able to use that for, like, in Skyrim, a map or something like that. You can just have a map up on your phone, and then you can look where you're going, and it'll track it. 
with the connection, which is actually a really cool thing. And just from the specs alone, Xbox better come out with something great. Like, 8 gigs of RAM, okay, you're going to have that. And the core processor better be the same or better. Blu-ray better run, DVD and HDMI better run. And backwards compatibility is probably going to be canceled with Xbox as well, which is, you know, bound to happen. But that app thing with the phones, ooh, that's sweet. And the uh, the cloud thing, the PS Cloud or whatever it's going to be called, and where you can play backwards games all from the internet based. But that's really great. And the controller, I'm going to throw a picture up of the controller right now. The controller is so sweet. It has like this little pad on it in the beginning, and not in the beginning, on the front. And I don't know what that's actually for. I think it's like a scrolly pad, but it's really cool. And I'm looking forward to the PS4. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get it. I'm probably going to stick with Xbox, whether they are comparable or not. I mean, if they're like bottom of the line, like garbage. I mean, like one gigabyte RAM processor and you have to run Intel Core i3, stuff like that. And you have one gigabyte of RAM and you can't have anything, then I'm definitely going to go to PS4. But with all of this, it makes me wonder if we're actually going to have to pay for PS4, like we do for Xbox right now, Xbox Live. If we don't have to pay for PS4, that's going to be so much better than Xbox. Like, pay-wise, okay, I prefer Xbox, to be honest. Like, I enjoy Xbox. They have some good stuff, and I don't mind paying for it. But then, if we're not even comparable, like if Xbox is not comparable to PS3, and we have to pay for it, that's, I think that's going to be a game changer, definitely. Big time game changer. Alright guys, a couple add-ons. A built-in capture card, live streaming, and like a share button, which is pretty much sharing your screen with a friend. You can share your what you're doing. Like If you're sitting at the dashboard, say you're on Xbox, you're sitting at the dashboard, and one of your friends is playing Black Ops 2, you could go watch them play Black Ops 2, and you wouldn't even have to like ha own the game or anything. You can just watch your friends play. You can chill with them in a party, talk to them, relax, and watch them play. It's like, ooh, like nice kill. Ooh, nice quick scope. Ooh, you suck the D, and they suck the D. That's what happens. But then, with the built-in capture card, if you do own Black Ops 2, you can record your own gameplay. And I don't think it can be a like really lot lot of gameplay. I mean, like I don't think you can record an hour was worth. Hour would be max, is what I'm thinking. I think you have to record about 30 minutes. You you have about 30 minutes of gameplay, is what I'm thinking. No more than that, or else, you know, they'd put the capture card companies out of business, such as Elgato and Hopog and Avermedia. There's no way they would give you more than, I'd say, an hour. I mean, but I, I can definitely partner up with the capture card companies but besides that you can also live stream to Ustream. Now this isn't YouTube, it's not JTV. Ustream is its own website. I'll put a link below if you want to go check it out. And I'm pretty sure that Sony partnered up with Ustream and that's why they have this like little deal with them about like, okay we can live stream, you can live stream straight to Ustream only. As of now. Now there might be updates for YouTube and everything. It might be like a one year contract runs out and then you can go straight to YouTube or whatever you want to do. But I'm not sure if I'd trust that right away. I'd let the bugs get fixed and then everything. Plus, besides that, what are you guys thinking about? Are you going to buy it as soon as it comes out and then, you know, let the bugs get fixed and buy it later or straight when it comes out? I want it straight when it comes out. Like, I'm not saying I want it to not be fixed, but, I mean, I kind of want it, like, release day, you know what I mean? All right, guys, there's a little things that I just want to tell you about. Besides that, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye.